B Bad and Brandon. Counting for a second. And we're live. Ooh. We are back in this hot seat. Is the cold seat turning the aircon on? I did turn it off, I'm it's, not gonna lie. Did you turn it it's up like, or down? Like up in temperature slightly. It's oh. the climate control seat. Soft. Is what it is, I think. It's it's soft. What do you got it on? Yeah. It's like on twenty two. <laughs> yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, that's the idea. You had it on twenty before. Yeah, that's even better. <laughs> no, bro, it was freezing. We're back in the Antarctic <laughs> seat. Yeah. It was, bro. Like it was so cold. I was like, don't be on our last week. Like, we recorded an episode just before you got in. Yeah. And I was like, don't show weakness. <laughs> just sit there and just, just sit there and out. take it. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck, this camera's high depth. I wonder if it's 300 like, kilos. You're not fucking cold. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's interesting cold. what breaks us. Yeah. I've got a story about that, which we'll get to, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> like, just never. I, I should be like good with it, though, because I've gone to like ice baths with, with this motherfucker. Mm. With cold tubs. And he just turns it down even more. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, cold better. It's a cold, I want it's a, a, it's a cold tub. It's not a, a, yeah, a, thank you. It's a, it's a fucking tub. cold tub. Mate, yeah, mine's like, permanently set on 0. 0.4, 0. 0.5. Like if there's if there's no ice, I'm not interested. It's an ice bath, not a fucking cold water bath. A point, you got 0.5. Yeah, got, got a chest breather. Oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, you just, yeah, 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 right. I've yeah, seen yeah, a lot of people do that. Easy as fuck, man. Easy to do. It's so easy. 350 bucks, and then yeah, like 100 bucks worth of sealant and temperature thermometer and shit. Are you ice bathing every day? Yeah, yeah, every morning. Walk the dog, come home, strip off, tub in the bath. Yep, two two to three minutes. Lovely, that's so yeah, yeah. good. What a good way to start the day. <laughs> oh man, it's not it's just shit. Like make no bones about it. Like it doesn't feel amazing. There's some suffering. Yeah. There's definitely some like why am I here? But yeah. you know, <laughs> you, too much. you do it, and then everything else in the day is easy. So hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I've just reintroduced the cold showers every morning. Yeah, oh, right. And I'm like, this always needs to be cold shower. You have to. Yeah, always. But now cold. I need it to be colder. Mm. Get an I ice, agree. Get an ice bath. Commit. I'm a, I would love an ice it's bath. A, so hard. Actually, if anyone's listening who owns us, I mean, because we're the most popular podcast yeah, ever. Yeah, of course. Yep. Please give us a nice bath. A Odin, ice bath. Odin Tubs on the Gold Coast. <laughs> Fucking sponsor us. Yeah. Come They're on, Johan. Goldie. Yeah, he's jo- Johannes. I think that's his, oh, that's his name. Fuck. Jono. Fuck, Jono is his name. One of us. That's Your Johannes is that other dude. Yeah, John, he's cool too. I think it's Jono. Come on. I've been there. I've been to the fucking workshop. One of my clients bought one. It is oh, a thanks, beautiful man. tub. Mm. And it is cold as fuck. Yeah. Literally. Sponsor yeah. us. Give us one each. Come on. Odin. There's only like, there's I, I, only I three can sell myself us. out with a fucking Johnny promo code for a fucking <laughs> cold tub. I would fucking. Happily. Yes. Yeah. Johnny 20 after all my posts. Isn't that what you do? <laughs> <laughs> Give me the cold tub. Come on. Nice. Come on. Come nice. on. Oh, yeah. dude, they look sick. Yeah, dude, it's beautiful, bro. Yeah, great. Be They're beautiful. stunning. If they want to sponsor a like, section as you well. Want, you want in on a sponsor? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Three I'm, tubs, please. Absolutely. We should, I'd shout it out for everything. Yeah, it'd be great. I would sell myself. And I, I would regularly bring them to the section events as well. Yeah. yeah. Just get myself a little go. trailer. Yeah, yeah. Time. I That's feel like it. we should introduce you, but. Yeah, well, maybe. Yeah, yeah. No, I reckon there's some guy talking about ice bars, drinking coffee. Yeah. Oh, shit. It's not where I parked my car. (laughs) (laughs) Like, how did I get here? How am I in this door? I've got a coffee now. I'm on a podcast. I'm I'm on a car. We only pulled you off the street. Pretty much. Yeah. (laughs) We were literally like, fuck, our guests didn't show up, walked outside, like, you look good. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I can tell you, that would be fun to do one day. No, I remember that time I was at the... Yeah, we tried to. We I didn't, tried to they get... They didn't want it. Yeah, they, they were scared. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. Fuck, I wonder what episode that was. Anyways, welcome to the podcast, Aaron. Thanks, man. Thank thanks you for... Thanks for having me. Woo. No, thank, thank, you. thank you for coming on. We uh, sure. greatly appreciate your time. Mm, um, sure. No, you are a very busy man. Try to be. Um, yeah, it's funny. We all try to be busy, and then half the time I'm like, I should nap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I should really know. Well, it's been an hour and a half since I've had food. Got to make a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's with, anyway, that's a whole different yeah, subject. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a nap topic. Mm. Anyway, let's not start the nap topic. Mm. Mr. Right. Mr. Darren. Yeah, yeah. 21 sounds. Who you are, or words, if you want to use words instead of sounds. Mm. Who you are and what you do. Okay. Uh, I am a veteran, uh, infantry, ex infantry. I run. Uh, military inspired workout experience based on special forces selection courses called section uh i'm a drummer yeah, as you well, <laughs> of about 22 years uh i am a dog owner to the best staffy in newstead mm. his name's harley you've all seen him obviously uh what else am i i am a batman enthusiast 
We I show Cat. We show Cat more. And as, I am as, Batman. I say enthusiast because I've committed to a half sleeve, or full sleeve. I was going to half chest tattoo. So it's is that's, that that's no. actual commitment? Yeah, like yeah, we're well over twenty one, but I don't give a shit anymore. Let's uh, let's yeah. explore these tattoos yeah. for a second. Yeah, there. yeah, there's Batman there. That's um, dope. And then like the Dark Knight poster. Like, How cool is that one? Eighty nine Batmobile. Some of the penguins. Uh, Alfred penguins. on there. Oh, yeah. uh, Bruce Wayne there. And then the chest piece is uh, Arkham Knight montage. Uh, as can well. you slip that down? No, I can't do that. No, <laughs> it's a different website. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's a membership model. That's that one. It's the only fans. Yeah. Boys the only, paid. only bats. That's it. <laughs> only exactly. Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's that's probably the key points for me. I think. Um, okay, yeah. so. Let's not talk about anything else except Batman. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is now the Batman podcast. Yeah, yeah, the Batman. Sweet. Favorite Batman? <laughs> Ooh, that's oh, a good one to start okay. with. What do you think of your Batman movie? Oh, I loved it. I thought it was oh, great. Fuck right? Yeah, it was it was a very different take on on anything they've done. Um I was very disappointed that that Affleck, you know, like initially when when Affleck was going to be in it and then directing it and then he got Matt Reeves to direct it. I'm like, "All right, I I fuck with Matt Reeves. He's good. He's got yeah. some good shit." And then he stepped away and they're like, "Yeah, we're taking it in a new direction." I'm like, "I don't know." And then they're like, "Robert Pattinson." I'm like, "Look, I'll reserve judgment, you know, mm-hmm. until I see it. We'll see if he sparkles or not." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Man, exactly. fuck it, like it. he yeah. all of the bat sparkles like it was it was, it was pretty phenomenal man it was a very different take that he wasn't a like a he didn't have all the gadgets yeah like, it was very basic he was just batman. a dude that basic just batman. Fucking, yeah. but you yeah. like, used his head and yeah. just like fucking punch people like, did yeah. you see batman year one the animated yeah yeah it was yeah, similar yeah. to that yeah yeah, yeah. I loved exactly it. yeah I it was what it was what batman begins should have been a bit well, i don't know about should have been but like Nolan had his own take on that, and he was and that was up there. Great. And that, was, that was good, exactly. Mm-hmm. But look, I, I still think, uh, I still think Batfleck. Um, I think he was great. I think it was phenomenal. Yeah. For anyone that's read the um, Dark Knight Strikes Again and Dark Knight Returns, the Frank Miller graphic novels, mm-hmm. they relied heavily on on that. Is that the um, one they turned into animated movies? Yes. Oh fuck! Yeah, there we go. yeah, yeah. So the Frank Miller graphic novels, like. There, if you look on YouTube or, or Google, there there'll be side by side images of the scenes from yeah yeah from the graphic novel and yeah, the Batman what they've actually movie. done Batman Superman movie, um, oh, and they are literally, literally identical, yeah, um, so which cool. was which was phenomenal. So uh, look, I think I think Ben Affleck did a, an amazing job. I loved him um, in the Zack Snyder oh yeah version of Justice League. Zack Snyder cut was fucking phenomenal. Yeah, I literally phenomenal. had dreams about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who, who were you in the mo- when you dreamed? Oh, and I was just watching it. Oh, you were yeah, watching, right. it, watching it, watching it. You were dreaming about watching it. Yeah, it was Sick. so good because of like the original. We all didn't call the original. Was like it was good, but it wasn't that original. Mm. Mm. Fuck, it was sick. Let's be honest, it was trash. Thank you. It was, I didn't it want was, to say it was, it was no, no. We we all feel it. We're yeah. just like, yeah, I'm just happy they're all together on the one screen. And then you walk away, you're like, oh, I could have been better. <laughs> but like, they um, rectified it. All, was good. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about the Christopher Nolan like trilogy, sorry. Mm. Uh, obviously, I would love to see how the Joker would have tied in if, you know, obviously, oh, Heath mm. Ledger didn't pass. Mm. Um, but also, Bane had to be way more jacked. Yeah. Like, bro, we have so many performance-enhancing drugs you could have leveraged, <laughs> yeah. and you didn't take one. Yeah. And it, it could have been medical. I'm sure there's it, the right yeah, doctor that would have decided. In yeah, Hollywood, yeah. you can just get away. Like, 100%. bro, you looked, you had gyno nips, and, mm. like, like, come on, bro. You just, I mean... You were great as a character. I mean, mm. I imagine seeing him. get big. Like Tom Hardy, you Juicy got big. jacked and shredded Juicy. for fucking Warrior. Yeah. Like, Travisaurus Rex. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Just do the same. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm I'm a big superhero fan in general. I can tell. I'm yeah, obviously yeah. I also Marvel, see. Yeah, also yeah. Also a little Fantastic. Marvel yep. action DC. Nice. I want to get yeah. this um, all DC. Yeah, right. And then they but, can spot it out. Oh, yeah. Fuck, I'm not going to lie. The last getting that elbow done really kind of put me off cats for a little bit. Get your sternum done, mate. Commit. Don't be a coward. Right. <laughs> I am I, sitting here. I've done some dumb shit in my life, but getting my sternum tattooed for this piece was at least top three. I <laughs> literally looked at your arm and you're like, you've got pretty much a whole elbow yeah, covered. Yeah, the elbow and the junkie spot. in there. Yeah, bro. That fucking killed. It's, I don't know. It's all the nerve endings and shit, but it was spicy as fuck. I so. can't imagine. Oh, sorry. I can't imagine getting sternum done. No, it was just the worst part was that my tattoo artist is probably about your size so he's oh, like, really he's a pretty big dude well, he's lost a lot of weight big d's what a day but, but he's also like he's also he's been doing all forms of martial arts for like 25 years so the guy knows how to like control a body obviously he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a tattoo artist and everything and i'm like flinching when he's doing my sternum he's like dude do you mind if i like restrain you and i'm i'm legit thinking he's just going to get a belt and tie me down but at that point i'm just like 
bro, do what you got to do. Like, I'm here for the day. Let's get this done. So he just like wedges my head in between his like hip and elbow like a vice and then just like bare paws my chest and then just starts drilling. And then because he's a fucking whack job, he just whispers in my ear, commit, commit and submit. And I was like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes. But at that point I was so delirious from the pain. I'm just like, yeah, sure, man, whatever. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, you're literally like. Oh, I'd be so Jesus. terrified. I actually can't go anywhere. So yeah, 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 yeah I'm yours so. now. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Please make it quick. <laughs> pretty much. I, I, feel so like, yeah. I went to Garage Inc. Manor on the Goldie. Yep. Um, Carly Sabrina, shout out. Did uh, did all mine, and like she's half the size of what I'm. Mm. Mm. And I think she just took pity on me by the end because she's like obviously they're all covered in tats. Yeah. And like <laughs> to be fair, none of it really like. Obviously, there's parts that hurt, but I was able to talk all the way through it. Yeah. And then I got this last piece, yeah. last inside, sorry, done two days back to back. This one and then the fucking Black Widow on the back. Yeah. She did it at the end. And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, yeah. I'm done. Like, I'm just cooked. Yeah. And I swear, she just like was giggling the whole time. Mm. Like, oh, what a pussy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm the can elbow. You, just, just saying, yeah. yeah can you stop being soft? I know. I'm just like, <laughs> but I didn't even talk to her. I just had my head down in the pillow, like, just, uh, just shut yeah. up and get it done. Yeah, like, yeah. That's it. Anyways, that's a different story. But let's talk. <laughs> Actually, yeah, about yeah. this section, <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah, let's get into section. We could brother. be here yeah, cool. for so long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where the section? Where to start? Why to start? So, and what's it doing? All right. So, section was born out of my experiences with special forces selection courses in the army. So, Whoa. when I enlisted, my whole focus was always about um, I wanted to be special forces. Yes. Mm. And being completely honest, it was always born out of just playing a lot of video games as a kid. Yep. Um, yeah. Well before Call of Duty, we're talking like the original like Rainbow Six, you know, oh. Tom Clancy, like before yes. it was all 3D, like Nintendo 64 style, you know. Old school. And I'm just like, that's fucking ball. I want to be, man. I'm 36. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Looking good. Oh, stop it. This guy. Moisturize kids. There you go. <laughs> Don't pay it off. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm like, yeah, I want to I do that. And then as I grew up, I started taking more of an interest in doing that. Uh, and then, yeah, at 27, I enlisted under what's called the Direct Entry Recruitment Scheme, where the Army, every year, they take around about 20 civvies um, and put them through a little bit more of a rigorous screening process. And then they um, enlist them under that scheme, which kind of fast tracks them through to commando selection. Uh, this is this is what it was when I enlisted in, in 2013. I was yeah. going through 2012, mm. 2013. Um, so yeah, enlisted in... Uh, in under the direct entry scheme and then did my first selection in 2013 came off injured in that um Oof. got uh, yeah knee just kind of kind of blew out standard sort of infantry stuff yep. uh and then got posted up to six battalion up here in brizzy uh reapplied for commando selection 2016 came off that uh via what's called a board of studies mm -hmm. so basically every sort of few days they look at the numbers of the of the candidates who's who's in the bottom five percent given fitness results attitude skills whatever it is and they just ruthlessly eliminate the bottom five percent because yeah. you get 170 people starting the selection course Yo. and there's like 30 spots on the reinforcement yeah, yeah. training mm. cycle so they got to whittle down those numbers if they don't whittle themselves down yeah yeah so i got uh, got buzzed uh on about day eight so it was about three days before the end so just as everyone's stepping off to do the final three days no food no sleep Ooh, the fun um, one the fun part yeah they uh they read out a bunch of numbers and uh, my number was up uh, and that was that for me journey was over for then uh, so I went back to Brizzy and then reapplied for selection for SASR this time uh, for the 2018 course, got on that. And then about three days in, um, yeah, just, just had this sort of stark realization. I'm like, I just don't want to do this anymore. You know, yeah, it's, right. I don't, I don't love the entire job. I love the cool shit, all the Gucci shit, you know, kicking doors in, flying out of helicopters and stuff, but learning how to rig up a para harness and tie knots and make fire. And I just, I just don't. It's not me. It's, you know, I didn't want to do that. Um, so yeah, I had to, had to be honest with myself about that removed myself from the course came back to brizzy and then within 12 months i was medically discharged from the army yeah. uh and then yeah the first year was just kind of finding my feet and then after that COVID hit um but my first event for section was in 2021 and it was born of the idea of um there's a market for this type of training and it's mm. not just a boot camp it mm. is a realistic military experience mm -hmm. so i aim to simulate the special forces selection to the best of my knowledge and my experience mm. and what i went through and my staff went through um two civvies basically so yeah. we stop short of you know not feeding them uh, 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 no, there's been events that I've run where we haven't fed them, uh, but we, we stop short of, of really looking them in the eye and, and kind of calling them nothing and, 
and that sort of stuff. Not that you get too much of that on the actual yeah. selection clauses, but there's a difference between people who sign on the dotted line, written the blank check for their life in the service of this country, yep. and gym goers in Civvy Street who mm. want a realistic experience yep. without actually dying. Yeah. You know? yeah. So <laughs> we we very delicately tread that fine line yeah, yeah, with yeah. that. Um, so first session I did was at a gym in Newstead, Facilities Fitness. Yep. Um, and it was started out as, you know, just a gold coin donation to legacy, you know, sort of support mm. the troops and the families. Yep. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, it's grown now to the point where I'm taking section into the corporate space, uh, working Sick. with corporate teams to basically use the same sort of systems that we use in the military and you know, in infantry and special forces in terms of team building, team dynamic, mm. um, leadership coaching, and just basically getting the culture of, of any sort of team, whether it be a sporting team or a corporate team, to really understand excuse me, what it is to be in a team and to mm. work for a team because mm. you can, you know, the team, teams are everywhere, mm. um, but there's a difference between working in a team where it's just a bunch of individuals and working for a team. Mm. So we seek to, whether it's a four-week corporate package or it's a two-and-a-half-hour event, we seek to point that out to people but at the same time actually show them how they can utilise those skills uh, in their everyday lives as well. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a big thing. Like a lot of those spaces, whether it be, you know, come from an ex-military background or a leadership background, whatever in business, a lot of the the courses will tell you all the information, mm. but not show you how, mm. not show you how to implement it. Where I think coming from that military background, that's your bread and butter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we. I mean, there's a time for for beasting, you know. So for instance, I use the example of, of selection courses. You know, there's there's the 14 day or the 21 day selection course where it's like, we're just gonna fucking flog you. We're gonna mm -hmm. grind you down, see what your character is made of. And once we are confident with your personality type and your character and what you might be able to bring to the table, we can teach you the skills that we want you to know. Mm. And then whether it's a 12 month or an 18 month, uh, what's called the Rio cycle, reinforcement training cycle, where they teach you all the shit they want you to know, the attitude changes. So mm. it's like, you prove yourself in terms of your ability to get flogged, now we're actually going to show you with that mindset that we know you have how to learn all of these mm. skills. And don't get me wrong, it's not without its its floggings from what I've heard from, you know, other mates who've done the reinforcement cycle and are mm. in the units and everything. They're still getting smashed. They're still getting <laughs> smashed every now and then, but, but it's warranted now. Yeah, it's yeah. like, right, you guys have been slacking off or you fuck assing around, whatever. Yep. So now we're going to do some you know, stair runs or whatever. But the oh. attitude is, you know, and it's all, it's all data-based. It's all science-based. It's like, we want you to learn, so therefore your, you know, your your brain pattern, your brain waves, your heart rate, your general disposition needs to be very much in what's called the green zone mm. for you to actually retain information. Mm. You know, I remember mm. talking to a mate of mine um, <clears throat> who passed SAS training, and he was telling me they all rocked up first day of training, so they had a week or so off after selection, and they get out to the range. They were told, okay, be here at you know zero eight hundred whatever, um, comfortable clothes, um, and on on your first day of weapons training. So they get there. And um, and they're all formed up, still very much like, oh shit, is this selection mode? They're all there, you know, hands behind backs, you know, at rest position, whatever. Uh, and one of the DS or the, the staff, you know, rocks up and he just looks at everyone, looks them up and down. And he goes, "What the fuck is this?" And my mate was thinking, "He's like, oh, that's it, we're fucked again." <laughs> Here we go. Day one, three more days, no more, no that, food. <laughs> that's it. Like this is on again. And he's like, "We said fucking comfortable clothing, and here you guys are wearing fucking uniforms and shirts on. Fucking go back to your rooms." Get a fucking brew, put some comfortable fucking clothes on, bring a hat, and we'll see you back here in 30 minutes. Fuck's sake. And they're all just like, this is what? This is a trap. <laughs> what, what's going on? Sure enough, they came back. He's like, right, is everyone feeling more comfortable? And they're like, yes. <laughs> and he's like, good, let's crack on with the weapons lessons. You know, and then there was this old other like crusty boy Vietnam SAS operator guy, you know, fucking 10,000 confirmed kills or whatever. He rocks up, he's just got like a durry hanging out his mouth. You know, it's like, right, oh fellas. <sighs> puts a cigarette down on like an ammo box or something. He's like, here you go, He's M4 over here. Uh, range is down that way. Magazine eject button, um, cocking handle, trigger, safety, point it down range. Um, yeah, get some rounds off and uh, yeah, just work out how to use it. Don't shoot each other. I'll see you back here in about an hour. And he just grabs his cigarette and fucks off. <laughs> and they're just like, what the fuck is actually going on here? Yeah, right. And then, yeah, obviously they were told afterwards that the point is we want you to be in that comfortable space where you can learn yourself mm. um mm. without the fear of like oh am i gonna get it wrong you know mm. it's like yeah don't fucking shoot each other but at the same mm. time work it out work it out amongst yourselves 
feel comfortable mm. and you'll start to enjoy what you're doing and retain that information. I guess bring it all the way back to section. What we do is we simulate that pressure, but at the same time, when we want people to learn something, we turn it down a little bit and we do what's called a pause play method. So this was something that we employed again in the infantry um, to actually learn something the correct way mm. rather than just practicing bad habits because all that does is it reinforces a neural pathway mm. to do the wrong thing, right? Mm. It's like you never finished a set, mm. you know, on a bad rep, mm. right? Drop the weight, do a good rep so your nervous system goes, that's how we do it, right? Mm. So for instance, with I take the example of like clearing a room. So you stack up on a door, you make entry, and then you go, right, pause. And then the instructor would be like, what did you do here? Oh, I went left instead of right. Right, okay, so you know you're supposed to go right. Correct, okay, reset, go back to the start, make entry. Correct, 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 pause. What did you do there? I went up instead of down. Okay, so you know now you've got to go right and you've got to go down instead of up. Yes, reset. And you do every single step correct, stopping at the point that it's incorrect. Mm. So all you're doing is reinforcing that, positive yeah. chain of of movement right so when we're trying to teach people something or how to do something that's what we go for so we're still under the guise of that sort of you know uh we want to apply a little bit of pressure but we also want people to walk away from that not being like what the fuck just happened i've just woken up and all of a sudden i'm here and mm. flogged it's like no i actually learned something mm. there i learned something about how to work in a team i learned something about myself and that's the other sort of big part of it as well as that sort of self-discovery mm. you know? I feel like uh, with that method, that pause play method as well, because you are constantly reinforcing that positive and but also stopping that incorrect pattern before it's happening, mm. that's going to be more exhausting than fucking just flogging them. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. They're going to be so drained. Exactly. Because when, once your heart rate reaches a certain level, I think it's like 120, 140, you start to lose, you start to lose, um, ability of your fine motor skills mm -hmm. so in a, in a military sense that's physically a trigger pull that's right? a problem you can't do this Need to right? use that thing in that situation. absolutely in that situation <laughs> it's very important if, if nothing else that's important yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly uh, but then what happens is you get you know visual and auditory exclusion as well mm -hmm. so we saw that a lot in um heightened stress situations as well you know they simulate that stress and you learn to regulate your breathing um so then what happens is if, if you get visual and auditory exclusion, you know, you, you can literally only see this, you get target fixation. Mm -hmm. and, and when someone's like, Hey, stop, or don't do this or go here instead of there, you physically can't hear them. It's like, it's mm -hmm. like doing everything like this. Right. So if we get people too heightened, they're physically, physiologically not actually going to learn anything. Mm -hmm. And that's not what we want because any, any schmuck <laughs> can just yell at people in campaigns for two and a half hours. Like Scream that's someone. <laughs> exactly. And that's easy. And don't get me wrong. It's a whole lot of fun. <laughs> but at the end of the I was day, gonna say, that's my bread and butter. Exactly. Yeah. Look, and look, I love it as well. I've been doing it for nearly 15 years, but at the end of the day, we have a responsibility to people to not just break them down, but then build them up stronger. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, that's why people go to the gym. They don't just want to flog themselves. They want to actually get stronger. Part mm -hmm. of that is sometimes taking a step back as well. I'm, mm -hmm. Again, I'm all for you know no rest days, but sometimes you got to have a fucking rest day, or at, least, a rest day. or at least periodize your training. So mm -hmm. we have a responsibility to build people up and make them stronger. So it's not just a one trick pony. Yeah, it came along as a military experience, got yelled at, got crawled, flogged, <laughs> got flogged, crawled through some mud and like now I can work in a team. It's yeah. like, no, no, no. What did you learn about yourselves and what can you apply mm. in your everyday life? That's such Damn. a good fucking model. Mm. Yeah, cool. Thanks, man. That's yeah, it's like, cool, it's, bro. But I just I haven't really, I don't know, maybe because I'm not exposed to that space, but I haven't really heard of that in-depth explanation of what you're doing. Mm. And I think, it, like, I mean, you listen to you talk about it and of course it makes sense, mm. but nobody's ever applied into a corporate setting like that mm. it's all just about let's just go and barrage them with leadership of how things operate in in the army yeah but i haven't necessarily heard about okay well let's take him out and actually let's put him through these scenarios mm. i mean mm. they could, and i could be completely wrong there could be things out there like that but as i said i've never been exposed to it so it sounds fucking mm. legit feedback must be good from the uh from the sessions yeah, yeah. look it is man look it's and i think being again being a trainer and a coach you know in, in that fitness space for 15 years you know having people come up and say hey i was able to do this because of what you taught me or what mm. i did with you is incredibly rewarding you know um the first session that we ever ran a couple of weeks later one of the girls came up to me in the gym and she's like yeah look i ran a half half marathon a week or two later and because of what i went through in that session i realized like oh wow i can actually fucking do this mm -hmm. i'm like that's cool that's mm -hmm. that's incredibly amazing that's like if anything that you're teaching i think you're like that just really resonates with me because just like you're just opening up people's eyes to what's actually hard mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. their level of hard may like mm -hmm. have been at this base level here for so long because you know we live in a world where i believe it's very cushy mm -hmm. it's very absolutely. soft absolutely and all you're doing is going wait a minute this is actually hard mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Or even if it is hard, you learn you can do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, this you is don't have to stop. Yeah. It's not necessarily about hard, but it's possible. 
Yes, yes. You know, like a, like I knew it was possible to be awake for five days and carry all sorts of shit on my back. Mm. I knew it was possible, but then physically I'm like, well, I did it. So mm. I was like, oh, okay. Like I know it's possible now for me mm, to do yeah. that. That's a great way to explain it because like? everything we... <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> it's like no matter what though, everything we do, like whatever challenge, it's going to be hard, mm. but there's different levels to it. And yeah. you're just exploring people's possibility and opening them up going, you can do this. Yeah. You can push through this. Exactly. You've been through worse. Exactly. And, and look, it's all relative as well. Mm. This is the thing. You know, and this was similar to a selection course, similar to a um, a section event. You know, the the thirty year old professional CrossFit athlete might hit his breaking point at you know eighty minutes out of a hundred minute session, mm. right? And he's like, "That's I'm fucking cooked." Whereas the um, you know eighteen year old kid or the middle aged parent or whatever might get in there and be like, "I've hit my breaking point at twenty minutes in." We've done the warm up and we've done one activity and I am fucking cooked and I am questioning my belief system right now. Mm. And that's that's relative to the individual. Mm. But again, what we seek to do is show them that, okay, wherever your point is, you can go past that. So mm. everything after that point, if you make the choice to actually continue on, because it is a choice, if you make that choice, this is what's possible. And then everything else in your world opens up mm. after that. Mm. So, yeah, which is exciting to see, man. It's really exciting That'd to see um, the benefit that people get from the sessions as well. Um, we do something that I believe is a, is a massive point of difference to any other program that's out there is at the end of it, we have like a, a bit of a sharing circle. So um, I guess it's similar to, you know, like a, whether it's men's or women's work, it's, it's a circle basically where we all sit in a container in a, in a safe space in our teams. And we sort of say, right, what was, what was coming up for you when you were doing this? Or when you had that moment where you were crawling and you're like, oh, and you just kind of slumped, what happened there? And then people's responses are generally like, oh, uh, one time a, a lady was saying like, oh, I just had this experience where I'm like, oh, I told myself I was going to push through and I just felt like I physically couldn't do it anymore. And then I got mad at myself saying, oh, you always quit. You know, we're like, oh, okay, that's that's really interesting. Like, let's let's dive into that. Let's mm. explore that. Oh, well, I, I sort of feel like, you know, I, I really prepped myself. I knew this event was coming. I did some training, whatever. And and then I told myself I wouldn't quit. And then I just felt like I kind of gave up. And we're like, all right, well, where else in your life mm. do you feel like that? Like, where else does that kind of mm. show up for you? Oh, sometimes at work, I'm really excited about a product or a project. And then all of a sudden, I'm just kind of losing interest. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I've just, I feel like I want to quit again. And I really beat myself up. You know, and like, okay, well, what's your experience with that? Do you feel like other people see you that way? Like, yeah, I'm really worried that everybody sees me as a quitter. So then I open it to the rest of the team. I said, did anyone else experience that at this person? And then everyone's like, no, not at all. And one girl put her hand up. She's like, I actually experienced you as someone that I can look to and follow because you're a bit older, you're a bit more wiser, you've been there and done that. And you still showed up and you gave it heaps in this experience. Mm. And when that younger girl said that to that older lady, I watched that older lady's body language just go, oh, wow. Like she was all, she was filled with pride mm. that someone from the younger generation saw her as mm. that leader and that role model. So seeing those shifts in people's mentality, you know, in the, whether you want to get all esoteric or not in, in the headspace and the heart space mm. go, Oh wow. Like I'm that for someone else now mm. that, is, that far outweighs any physical, like, Oh yeah, cool. I can, I can carry fucking two forty five kilo med balls on my shoulders. Mm that like oh well i just had a i had a shift in my headspace mm. mm. uh and in emotionally how i feel about myself that's the real goal that's mm. the stuff that we seek to uh seek to do and the quickest way to apply that pressure and get those feelings bubbling up in people is to apply that physical pressure mm. with with all the stuff that we do with yeah. the, the yelling and the screaming and the crawling and then so create yeah. a safe space for them to actually bring it out absolutely that's mm. important because again we have a responsibility not just to break people down but then build them up afterwards. otherwise all you're doing is breaking them down kicking them out the door mm. and they're like well that was cool but mm. like why the fuck would i do that again 100 yeah, yeah. you let you leave them feeling very physically vulnerable yeah and then it's funny though, like that example you use, like you can just see straight away how people have such a negative bias of themselves. Absolutely. And they, I, I've said it before, like we don't know who's looking at us. Mm. We have no idea who we're inspiration for. Yeah. And that experience for that older, oh, that middle-aged woman, sorry, mm. would have been so profound mm. because in no other circumstance of her life, no other scenario, would she have been able to mm. leverage that younger girl's opinion? Absolutely. And now you, like we have no idea mm. what that small wording sentence whatever that massive effect down the track absolutely and i think that is just phenomenal yeah thank you man i appreciate that that's that um, really cool 
Yeah. Well, you guys will come along to a session. We've got another one at the end of October. Oh, so. shit. Is it yeah. physical? Yeah. <laughs> like, let's, uh, oh, there was a... Is there cardio involved? I'll have to uh, chat to Britt about my knee and its <laughs> yeah. capabilities before I go I was to that. Say, There's um, nothing strappy tape can't fix, <laughs> oh, Don't worry, you'll be fine. No, I just, my wife will know that. Right? <laughs> How much tape can you put around that? <laughs> yeah. Have you got a... I'm sure you don't want to give away too much about a session, but mm. have you got any, like, favourite go-tos or, like, the things that you like to make people do within... Um, the event itself, or is it just depending on what's coming up and you modify and change it Look, there, a little bit? There's generally some sort of stores carry, so yeah. we'll just get the biggest, most awkward, random shit in the gym. Like we'll get awesome. like the sleds, but like yeah. the V, the V shaped yeah, sleds, yeah, yeah. the triangle carry ones. It. Yeah, and we're just like all of this equipment needs to be outside in 30 seconds. And there's people with like a 45 kilo dead ball and then like a 24 kilo kettlebell. Just, just running out the door awkwardly and shit, and we're like, "Cool, let's go for a walk." And then we'll just walk, and then they're, we're just like, "Hurry the fuck up, let's go." No, too slow. Stop. Put all your gear down. Let's do push-ups. And then it's like, "Right, too slow with that. Come on, pick your shit up. Let's go." And it's just that constant like barrage of just stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, um, and push-ups as well. Like you'd be surprised, man. People train push-ups every day, but you get them to hold that position, yeah, yeah, and then just say nothing and just watch them like. <laughs> and you can see the bit in people's brain where. They're like, I'm just going to bend my knees. And then they're like, shit, someone's watching me. So they'll like half bend their knees and then they'll come back up. And like, oh, shit, I'm just, it's that fear, that pressure mm. that, that I, I, personally, I love it. Like, because <laughs> it was applied to me all the time. Yeah, and now yeah. I get to do that to other you people. Not, no, back. Yeah, yeah, not in a masochistic way, but also yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but I'm trying to enjoy it. Like, let me I, just say. I can't, and I'm very fucking good at it. So, yeah. Yeah. You, there's, you, you are not a coach and like, you've got to enjoy it yeah. to mm. some degree. And it's not, as you said, massive, whatever the word. Masochistic. Thank yeah. you. But. It probably is. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, but but also there, there's a purpose. Yeah, you know, this, this is the thing. We're we're increasing people's comfort zone and their frame of reference mm. forcefully because mm. majority of the time, like it takes a special kind Needs of person. Well, that's the thing. It takes a special kind of person to sign up to say like you know cardio camp yep. from, from the mill or do yeah. a section event or want to do special forces selection. Knowing that you're gonna walk in there and there's gonna be a significant and prolonged amount of pain. And we're not talking like, you know, stabbed in the hand pain. We're talking like physical exertion pain yeah. where it, it brings up a lot of emotional things for you as well. Mm. You know, you're going to go in there and get put through the ringer. Yeah. So we, we want to apply that, you know, I guess a safe way. Yep. Um, and it attracts a certain type of people, which, mm. is, which is fantastic. So. Do you ever get a few people rock up and you're like, and then at the end of you're like, man, I never thought you'd crush that. Yeah, actually, we've had. You can never pick like the personality, and yeah, man, and I and I imagine the opposite would be as true too. You know, mm. you'd be a little stereotypical, big alpha looking lad, mm. just fucking tall, ten foot everywhere, and then you know, twenty minutes in, they're just a yeah, sobbing mess, just eating dicks, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just yeah. crushed. I'm yeah. only laughing. Crushed dreams. Yeah, 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 yeah. You say ten foot everywhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're just fucking big. Yeah, yeah at yeah. least in their head they are. It's <laughs> until then. It's in, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't take much to break people's spirit, man. You just say burpees go on, and then just leave the room. Can't yeah. Um, yeah. and just don't come back. And yeah, then yeah. just like, like I remember one of the one of the events we did. Um, a pair of the girls were like seven seconds late for the timing that I gave them. Yeah. I'm like, well, that's seventy push ups. Go on, and then I just walked out. And I came back about three minutes later, and they were still doing push ups. I don't know if they did all seventy, but it's that like that fear of like, oh, shit, I guess we better keep going. Maybe there's cameras here. Maybe they're watching us. But yeah. back to what you were saying, yeah, the the funny thing is what we've found with those big sort of alpha types, yeah. not not generally, but in specific examples, um, is the alpha types are the ones that want to do all of the leg the leg work, right? Yeah. So I'll be like, okay, I'm, I'm the team leader or I'm the, the fit and the strong one. Um, so I'm going to do everything. I'm going to take the heaviest load. I'm going to um, motivate everyone. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take all of the jobs i'm going to be all of the hats right yeah the fallacy with that and the problem with that is that people in that position of leadership need to lead right yeah not wear all the hats not wear all the hats not take all the heaviest load yeah so traditionally in the army the the team leader or the platoon commander or the section commander whatever it is in a formation of say eight guys they'll be towards the middle or even towards the back because they need to be able to see everything they need what's called command and control mm. so they're not the one carrying the machine gun or all the grenade launchers or all, yeah they've got like a map and you know and a radio and like that's it you mm. know and their weapon they're not the ones getting in there on the front you know first to fire all that sort of stuff they need to be able to lead and direct their team mm. so sometimes what we've found is those big alpha types they're like i'm the leader so i've got to do everything yeah it's, yeah it's not the case mm. conversely then you'll see uh, people who you just wouldn't think 
would be a leader and, and whether it, you, know, you consider that judgmental or not um it, it comes off sort of from their energy as well you know they might walk in and they're just like okay i'm just happy to follow and then when they get put in the team leader position they just fucking crush it <laughs> you know and whether that's a product of you know they're a they're a family man or a woman and they know how to like direct their children and this is just a different team yeah uh, or different bunch of kids different bunch of kids yeah <laughs> um or they're you know in their business or in their life they're in a leadership position they get in there and they just fucking switch on their mm. whole body language change they're like right i'm familiar with this now you yeah. know you go here you pick this up i'm gonna take this we all good mm. yep cool step off let's go and it's just like holy fuck that was like efficient as hell you yeah. know and that's really exciting to see as well putting yeah. people in those situations where you're just like oh yeah. wow you've, this is this is for you, you yeah know, yeah which is awesome was that always the purpose of section though to really have those profound moments that we spoke about earlier to impact people in a different way yes absolutely yeah the the intent was never just to create a boot camp mm. um and wear camp pants and be like oh, i got flogs so now i'm going to flog other people and yeah. get them to pay me money mm. the intent was always to make people better yeah yeah uh, the intent was always to make people stronger mm. uh, my whole purpose and i did a lot of deep internal digging in my soul and character and everything my whole purpose is to help people build resilience through adversity mm. you know and that's the catch cry for section as well resilience through adversity um you need to be compressed to be able to get stronger mm. it's the whole purpose of weight training break down to build up mm. you know um and there has to be more than just a physical experience 100 percent. you know there has to be um and i guess you guys would probably see it all the time um, or from my experience with with lifting when I was you know proper proper power lifting years ago before I had my spine refixed, um, it, barbells do that. Yeah, yeah they really barbells and fifty kilo packs really do that. Um, you know, you, you see someone who just isn't able to get a lift, and you'd be like, your technique's fine, you're strong enough, you're well rested, you've had your coffee, you've had your red snakes. This is in your head, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what you need to look at. What is it that's stopping you from lifting this? Mm. You know, what is it up here? Um, and this is the thing, this is, this is the point of section was to build people up in here because I've seen guys who are half my size. We're talking like five foot, you know, seven, eight, 75 kilos ring and wet do phenomenal feats of endurance on selection courses. I've mm. seen, you know, guys wearing their green and their Sandy berets and commandos and SAS and they're like this big and like, how the fuck did you make through, make it through mm. selection? I've also seen guys bigger than both of you guys, both in height and weight, being like, yeah, that 20K battle run we had to do on selection nearly fucking killed me. And now they're in, they're again, we're in their beret conducting operations overseas. Like, mm. how the fuck did you do that? Like, it's here. Mm. All it is. If you can sort this out, get this increasing that frame of reference and that capacity, mm. the body will follow. For those listening, he's talking about, and he's pointing to his head. Yeah, headspace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. just like, yeah, yeah. Mm. People aren't going to realize yeah, he's pointing yeah. to his head. Up here <laughs> being head. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and then that, again, that's the thing. If, if, if people's mindset can get them over the line, the body will follow. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. Why do you think? Because it's such a prevalent topic in this day and age. Mm. We talk about it, we hear about it, whether it be through a mental health perspective lens or through a resilience lens yet it's still not like mainstream it's still mm. not mainstay it's still not people still aren't picking it up mm. what do you think's the difference what do you think is that gap where is that gap in terms of i guess why what? people aren't doing it doing specifically section <laughs> not just section but like in terms of <laughs> in improving their resilience right mental resilience yeah yeah so we live in it's probably a bit scary it, it's absolutely it's scary but i think even deeper than that we live in from what i can tell we live in an age of accessibility mm -hmm. right and i've said this in other podcasts before and i'll continue to say it this is the only podcast that matters yeah exactly <laughs> all the other ones are yeah not that great yeah, um, b c and d and e compared to this one. exactly yeah. this is the alpha podcast uh so the age of accessibility mm. if you think about it we can sit on our couch and we can have food sex and entertainment delivered to us from mm. our mobile phone oh yeah Literally, the only thing we need to do is get up and unlock the door. Mm. That's it. Consequently, what that does is over time, small rep over small rep over small rep over time, weakens our ability or rather uh, it, it helps us to lose our ability to want to go out and try new things with, you know, say, different restaurants, go mm. and see a different show, go and talk to people mm. out in the public, you know. Um, and then losing that desire to do that 
weakens our ability mm. to do that, right? And if it weakens your ability to do it, then all of a sudden it becomes scary because you don't become confident in being able to do it, right? Oh, I can't go to the gym and do that. I can't hit that PR mm. or I can't go and do a section session. I'll never be able to talk to that girl. Or, oh, I, I, I'm too scared to go up and talk to that group of guys or I can't make friends or whatever it is because it hasn't been practiced. So I don't think it's been an all of a sudden like, oh, the world has become a scary place. I can't do anything. Everything in our lives has become so much easier uh, to get access to. Mm. So we lose practicing the reps and then losing the reps decreases our confidence in being able to do it. Mm. And then we end up here where sitting on couches, sitting on couches, doing podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> we lose that <laughs> resilience, that strength. Yeah. And, and resilience nowadays might be looked at as, you know, doing a section session or doing a boot camp or, or whatever it might be. But then you look at what goes on now and then you look at times like you know, in the World War Two era, mm. you know, where it was like the entire country was called to action. You know, the women were in the factories making the artillery shells. The men were at war. The children were working the jobs and mm. earning the money for food. A little bit more resilient. Yeah, you know, but, it, but it's all relative. But yeah, again, yeah, you look that. at the steady whether you want to see it as a, an incline or a decline of, of society and what, what's required of us now and what's accessible to mm. us. Um, you know, I, I use the starving children in Africa. You know, people have got to walk 10, 15 kilometers just to go and get water. Mm. You know, I can, I can order it. I can fucking order it. I can, <laughs> yeah, I can right. order one bottle of water. Yeah. One and bottle. way more than what you should. 100%. Of water. 100%. But you'll do it yeah. because it's convenient. Exactly. Because yeah. you can. You'll do it because you can. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's what changes that mindset. So, so as long as you, I guess maybe you recognise that the negative habits that can come with that accessibility, you still challenge yourself. Absolutely, that's the balance, right? Exactly, and the, again, things so you like do section. That's why I just do section. Yeah, come along to a section <laughs> session. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, or little things, you know, like the ice bath or the, yeah, you know, uh, having a coffee Odin. every night. Odin. Yeah, Odin. just little things. Yeah, yeah. So, and then you get that yeah. accumulative effect, that rep effect, right? Exactly. You get you get the reps on doing the hard thing. Yeah. You know, um, I put up a post recently, um, and I've got this list of, of things on my computer saying resilience isn't just, mm. you know, so resilience isn't just doing a section ses session. It's not just going to the gym and doing a fucking double, triple body weight deadlift. Resilience can be having a cold shower. Resilience can be, you know what, I'm not going to eat that cookie right mm. now. Resilience can be... You know what? I've got an early morning. I'm going to stop watching TV and I'm going to go to bed half an hour early. Mm. Resilience is doing the hard thing when nobody's watching. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's easy to fake resilience when you have eyes on you. Yeah. And I think it's harder to show true resilience when you're by yourself. Mm. When you're like, no one's holding me accountable. Exactly. Yeah. I am going to order this Macca's instead of making yeah. it. Dinner. I'm going to keep the yeah. hot water turned on. This yeah. little shower. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Exactly. What's yeah. two more minutes? Yeah. What's what's a couple of degrees? You yeah. know, what's this, what's this extra burger? Yeah. Whatever it is, you know. You could get an extra burger. Yeah, so you're not. Yeah. <laughs> you could do a chicken burger. I had a fucking burger. Next time. <laughs> this is such a digress. Um, I did have a question. Mm. Yeah. I like that reps thought thing. Oh, but, but you say yeah. to someone like, you know, I think something would be really good for you is just having a cold shower every night. Mm. You, you may have a cold shower for a little bit, okay, but it's like, do it for a while. Yeah. And you won't realize for a, until you do a reflection three months from now, you're like, oh, actually, fuck yeah. Mm. I, I treat myself to a warm shower on a Sunday. Yeah, there you like go. That, <laughs> like that. And whole, how fucking good do you look that, forward to that? That whole – see, here's the thing. Now I do it and I just feel like lazy at the end of it. Yeah, because, and then you feel like a piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, because it's just like, like oh, I've done my ice bath and then I'll have the hot shower. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to have a cold shower today. I'm going to have a hot one. But then I just feel slow. Like yeah. I feel yeah. sluggish That's yeah. a, physically. Yeah. yeah. You fucking have a cold shower that I – and Johnny, you make a perfect point of like, you don't notice the difference mm. until mm. two or three months. And yeah. I started it, I think last year with the Wim Hof app. Mm. Wim Hof. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Right. yeah. Wim's our boy. And he, you know, his app allows you to track it. Yeah. And then you get to like, tw I think it's 28 days shower challenge, whatever. Mm. And you're like, holy shit, I'm doing four minutes, five minutes cold shower. Yeah. And okay. then you look back and go, oh man, I have really good energy. Yeah. yeah. I'm not like sluggish first thing in the morning. Yeah. Yep. I'm not reaching for, I mean, I still have my coffee mainly out of yeah. taste now. Yeah. Not the coffee. fact that I need it. Need it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Fucking need that. So I think, and your, your analogy of like, if we treated resilience, like we treat muscle growth, mm. rep by rep, yep. set by set and increasing progressive overload. Yep. I think we'd see a lot more introduction of people trying to become a little bit more resilient. 
Yeah. And it's a great analogy to use. Mm. And, I, and I think, yeah, people have this, um, well, I used to have this, and I think to a degree I still do, you know, with my with my music practice or with my, you know, uh, when I'm in the gym, whatever, it's, oh, that, that goal is like so lofty, it's so big, it's so up there, you know, got to increase 20 kilos on my deadlift or whatever it is. I was like, well, no, you don't have to increase 20 kilos. All you got to do is next week, you're just going to add on 2.5. Mm. That's it. That's all. It's barely noticeable. Mm. Uh, this is a really great saying that I love and I use all the time. Is the chains of habit are too small to notice until they are too strong to be broken. Oh, I like that one. That's really good. Let that one drop in for you. Yeah. Boom! <laughs> That'll be the primary. That's, so, that's so yeah, true, though, because you don't notice, you don't notice it's it half until, a percent until, better. until you've done, you know, 30 days of ice yeah. baths or until you've added one to two kilos yeah. over 12 weeks. All of a sudden, you've got 15, 20 kilos on your deadlift. Yeah. You know, you're like, oh, yeah, fuck. I remember three months ago when yeah. I wasn't this strong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. just that constant repetition that, you know, that building resilience doesn't have to be, right, I'm just going to fucking train for a half marathon. Mm. You know, building well, resilience. Half marathons. Just it's, it's, running it takes, is never the answer. It's too yeah. far to run. <laughs> way too far yeah. drive that. You got to get there, catch an Uber, That's it. maybe drive. That's I know. it. The second class ride is always better than the first class walk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Another <laughs> armyism, yeah. Like, this is a little bit of a digression from exactly what we're talking about, but the resilience comes from doing smaller things. Like, mm. perfect example is like people thinking they just need to add 10 kilos to their bar each week till they get to their top points. Like, bro, just add two and a half. Mm. Yeah, add a rep even. Just, yeah. Like, add progression is so different. That yeah. is, and I think it takes more resilience to only put five kilos on your bar when you probably know you could put 10 because it's the hard thing even. doing the hard thing yeah, yeah the hard oh, thing is to sorry. track it track it properly and slowly yeah. over time yeah. rather than go i'm just going to go for a 20 kilo pr today and Will just fucking see it. what happens Let's yeah. Go. Come yeah, on, yeah. Hamstrings. yeah that's it you send your spine out your ass you know uh, i specifically remember someone putting me into a deadlift suit and doing that yeah. <laughs> there's also we need to consider there's fun. a better way yeah. there's also fun that needs to be considered it's an important aspect of life yeah and i, and I was having a lot of fun <laughs> watching me get into that deadlift, into that deadlift yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i thought yeah. So. i had heaps of it in fact <laughs> it was still probably one of the most toughest things i've ever done trying mm. to get my fat ass into that fucking suit yeah, but now every time you go shopping for new jeans, you're like, it's not a deadlift suit, so this is yeah, fine. Yeah, fucking tight. See, your, frame your perspective of, of what size is, is mate, very there you go. Yeah, that's yeah. fucking hilarious. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, that's too good. I love that. Uh, so what's next for Section 8? Uh, mate, next next for Section is we've got another event coming up on the 29th of October. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is going to be at 98 Gym in West End. Oh, uh, so that's going to be a, a spicy one as well. It's a pretty big facility, which is really cool. Mm. Um, and we're going to maybe go for a bit of a walk along the river and get some sunshine. Yeah, we're going swimming. We're going <laughs> swimming. Uh, no, we're not going swimming. There may or may not be some water. Uh, but no, that's that's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to be a really big one. They've got a great space. You do so much tough shit in section. But getting someone to jump into that Brisbane River, knowing what's in there, yeah, it will probably be that most resilient thing. They'll build, yeah, you, yeah. they'll build you some fucking yeah, muscle. Yeah. We're definitely not swimming in the Brisbane River. <laughs> you would build an immune system of a god that's if it. you survive. That's it. You created a cure for fucking COVID out of that river. Yeah. Yes. Fucking lol. Um, so yeah, next event is that's 29th cool. of October. Uh, and yeah, again, working up that corporate package Um to, to be able to implement that with uh, with teams and with sporting teams mm. and, and really be able to sort of bring what I know and my experiences and what we do with section into that space to mm. um, to just really, yeah, build better teams. That's, that's all it is. Like I wrote down in my diary one day, I was thinking my head was going all over the place. And I'm just like, let's just simplify our life. What do you want to do? I'm just like, I, I wrote down, I just want to fucking make people stronger. That's it. Sick. That's all I want to do, man. And like in any way that I can, whether it's physical training or coaching or section or mm. talking to people going, Hey, you know what? You can fucking do this and I'm mm. going to help show you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to show you how, you know, that's, that's my whole goal is mm. I just want to make people fucking stronger. And it's got to start with the head. Yeah, it has to start with the head because the body can do anything you fucking want to, you know, mm. so long as your headspace is good mm. and you have that belief in yourself and, and sometimes even a mentor or someone to show you how to do it. Mm. Literally anything is possible. Hundred yeah. percent. I think a mentor is very important from just uh, creating that safe space because mm. they one give you permission to fail mm. and that it's okay. Absolutely. Mm. But I reckon to get a better idea of the man behind section, mm. we're <laughs> going to hit you with ten of the most randomest fuck questions. Fuck, here we go. Send it. And they're not the ones you heard already. <laughs> no. So, I don't think they've been released yet, have they? No, they're oh. not. They would be. No, they're not. 
Oop. So ten of the most first thing that pops in your head. Yep. Rapid fire. Fucking send it and let's go. All right. You are Neo in the Matrix. Mm-hmm. You can have the red pill, find out the truth or the blue pill and continue on not knowing. What are you doing? Red pill. Yeah, baby. Yeah, I'm waiting for someone to say the blue pill, eh? Yeah. Favorite lunch item? Palmy. Yeah. Chicken or veal? Chicken. Oh yeah. Favorite movie setting you would like to live in? Zack Snyder's Justice League. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. We knew that was coming. Yeah. Best advice you've been given? Never quit, ever. Uh, what would you ask your lovely doggo a question if you could ask him anything? Am I doing good enough? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm. You want a cake or a pie? Cake. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. What board game are you, or card game, are you the best at? Do either. Um, yeah, it was a tough question. Uh, it is yeah. a toughie. Okay, I'll just probably say uh, Uno. Uno. Yeah, it's pretty standard. Your next tattoo? Oh, I am hopefully, shout out to Marshall from Third Eye in Melbourne, uh, hopefully going to get a full back piece, neck to hip, yes. of, uh, of a vision quest that I had while I was doing some holotropic breathing uh, involving seven samurai uh so it's gonna be a full back piece that's fucking sick yeah so it was a pretty for anyone that's done any holotropic breathing google it it's similar to the wim hof method but it's just like prop like you basically induce a hallucinogenic state Mm. and the first time i did it i had a full vision quest like i was a. think i've read about it in the book breathe by james nestor possibly yeah and he touches on the studies they did to create hallucinations yeah bro it is fucking wild i've done a few breathes now um and each one i've gotten precisely the lesson that i needed uh, but that first one that i did was full vision quest was, i was a traveled back in time i was a samurai wandering the land and then had yeah. all my ancestors behind me it was fucking wild so yeah Damn. hopefully get that tattoo on my back yeah yeah that's fucking sick mm. that's mad mm. favorite pizza like a like a margarita with spicy salami and olives. Oh, fuck if someone says they don't like pizza, they can get fucked. <laughs> yeah, they can get get off the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and so no, there's no in, room for weakness here. Yeah. So no longer available <laughs> yeah, on any of the things that we put just on. just stop the camera. I'm like get out. We're That's done. Hilarious. Thanks for wasting our time. <laughs> Darren, you got one week to live. What are you doing? Oh wow! I know. Can I say a few things? Yeah, you you got a week. I'm eating. All of the cakes and sugar. Uh, all of the cakes and sugar. All of the cakes and sugar. I am spending all of the time with my dog. We're going out to all the parks and all the beaches. And I'm probably going to blow whatever money I have left on, like, theme parks. Yes. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, man. Like, I'm I'm headed to Movie World yep. soon. With uh, dog. Well, actually, no, with my girlfriend. Yep. Dog, apparently, it's not dog friendly, whatever, and that I needs know. to change. Um, but yeah, no, we're going to go and spend a movie, a day at Movie World and just have a movie. Play. Just, just kind of like reconnect with that like childish, childlike joy, you no. know, just Dream World, Wet and Wild, yes. Movie World, or just, just, yeah, just all of the cakes and sugar. Superman Escape. Yeah, all I of it. I remember the first time I went on it. Yeah. It was, I had my eyes fully closed. Yeah. Second time, I'm like, I opened up a little bit more. Third yeah. time, I'm like, Woo-hoo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. so much fun. That's it. Just just live, man. Just, just you know, I, I remember uh, hearing uh, Eric Thomas, a uh, very inspirational, yeah. motivational speaker from the States. Eric Thomas said, die on E. You know, fuel tank is on empty. Yeah, I like you know, that. Die on E, man. Just oh, go down hard. Just that's it. Just let it all out. Eat all the cakes, all the. He meant like die on ecstasy. No, no, <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. Definitely don't do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just that's that's what I'd be doing. I'd just like be that. spending all that time um, just, just living. A couple of follow up questions. Do you yeah. like carrot cake? No. Oh, that's delicious. Vegetables what? and cake. Sh- no. Yeah, but it's very tasty. Savory or sweets, not a mix of both. It's very nice. It's like saying a tomato meringue pie. Pick a side. But have you like had a good carrot cake? Look, I think the only reason a carrot cake is good due to copious amounts of sugar. But even then, I'd rather just have a real cake. Sugar carrot cake. I'm a, I'm a hardline sugar yeah, cake kind of guy. Yeah, carrot yeah. cake is. Uh, I... And do you believe that Batman was going to beat Superman? Well, he did, didn't he? Exactly. I just wanted. <laughs> to do that. Yeah. I just wanted like you all, could have other. All of the literature, you know, all all of this is this is history now. This is research. You know, every there's never any any things about Superman beating Batman. 
Never happens because everyone's like, oh, he could do it. Why doesn't he? I'll tell you why. Because he's a little bitch. That's why. Oh. A little coward bitch. And if you're listening, Superman, what's up? Bring it. So, yeah, <laughs> there you go. That's it. I stand by it. Fuck it. <laughs> what an episode. <laughs> yeah. We just, I loved it. Now, obviously, we'll do the shout out thing. Right. Where can people find you? Where can they um, experience. experience section? Yeah, where can they be part of the section? Uh, so we're on Instagram. Uh, it's at be part of the section, spelt S-C-T-N. Mm-hmm. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, um, go check us out there. We're also part of the weapon brand as well, weapon wear. Do a lot of great bags and clothing. Uh, so if you want, head to the Weapon Wear website. We've got a section on there. We've got a section a section. section. Uh, yeah, section good one. Uh, yeah, and then we'll be we'll be launching the next event, um, the 29th of October. We'll be launching that this Monday. So I'm guessing this this episode isn't going to go out for a week or so. So by the time people listen to this, the event will be live. Uh, Boom. Yeah, so yeah we'll, I'll make sure we'll it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. Mate, you can do. an absolute Slip pleasure having DMs. you on. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time. We know you are a very busy man. <laughs> so we appreciate even more after listening to all that um can't wait to get you back on we'll have to talk more about the what you do and like i want to talk yeah. about the hol- uh, hol- holotropic breathing. Breathing. yeah yeah i want you guys to come to a section session as well so we'll, we'll, we can do a debrief on that don't look at me like that i'll get you there. oh I'll, yeah yeah I'll get you i mean there. i'm, I'm, I'm in, in post comp yeah yeah, yeah, I'm, oh, yeah, yeah okay. I'm in post comp as long as yeah. i am all uh, right we got this man yeah no it's nothing surgery can't fix mate exactly. <laughs> have you have you even trained exactly. if you haven't had surgery exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, but did you die 